It's good to be back. I was gone last weekend visiting my sister and her family in eastern Montana. I figured I would, could be able to, to visit them because they're actually in a more rural area than we are here. I was been joking with her that Montana's new motto could be social distancing since forever. Um, but I was able to, for the first time, see my newest nephew, Leo, in person. And uh, there's an experience from my return trip that makes me think of the readings that we have today. Well, one of the nights, I did some tent camping near the base of a small mountain to avoid being around people. The, that night, though, there was a line of storms that came through with strong, heavy winds and rain uh, akin to what Elijah experiences on Mount Horeb in the first reading, and maybe something like what the apostles went through there on the Sea of Galilee in the gospel. And so in the midst of the storm, I did have some concerns as to whether or not my tent would hold up. Fortunately, it did, um, and the storm really only lasted about half an hour. And I didn't have any earthquake or fire, as Elijah did. The next morning, then I was able to hike up the, the mountain with the sunrise, the only person on it the entire time that I was there. An experience of, of peace and being alone in the presence of God, just as we see Elijah and Jesus also seeking that out on their own mountains. So both Elijah and Jesus teach us that in the midst of the hecticness of our lives, that we need to get away to a quiet place to pray if you want to be able to hear the Lord. In Elijah's example, first he experienced the strong wind, but he didn't find the Lord in the wind. When situations are chaotic around us, when we feel like Things are so much out of our control. This often leads to an experience of interior storms as well. But these kinds of storms aren't from God. If you remember when I gave my homily series during Lent and Easter on the discernment of spirits, that was one of the things that we were considering is that that kind of interior disquiet is, is from the enemy, trying to get us off track from following the Lord. Because it feels like God is absent, in a sense, from the boat. But we learn that it doesn't mean that he is. It doesn't mean that we're alone. So then Elijah had the experience of the earthquake. But the Lord, again, was not in the earthquake. God doesn't desire to let us fall apart into utter ruin. Though there might be times in which God may allow us to be shaken by some of the things that we go through. Shaken so that it causes us to return to him. And then Elijah experienced the fire, and the Lord was not in the fire. And God's will is not that we be lost in eternal flames, but rather we experience the fire of his, his love so that we turn away from sin and imitate him. It was finally in the tiny whispering sound that God made himself known to Elijah. And that's where God is most often found, where we will find him, in the quiet. The Holy Spirit is a, a constant, persistent, quiet, whispering wind rather than a violent storm. God may have the power of the earthquake, but he chooses to be very gentle in shaking us back to him. The spirit is not a destructive fire, but compassionate and transforming fire of love. So when life places us in the midst of storms, when fears and anxieties begin to mount against you internally like the waves and the wind crashing against the boat, when the circumstances threaten to shake your faith in God, when the difficulties seem to be spreading about like an uncontrolled fire, what is missing the most 
is that we're unable at, at that moment to see that God is there. We need to find his still small voice, which indeed is underneath all of that surface chaos. If like Elijah and Jesus, we're used to getting away to some deserted place to pray, then we'll more easily be able to combat life's external and internal storms. Another little example from my, my time away, the very same day after coming down from the mountain and having that experience of, of, of the Lord, I got hit with car trouble. So isolated and alone, stuck hours and hours away from anywhere, without immediate relief, and it was a moment where those storms of fear begin to arise. Concern, of course, for getting back to all of you. I had a wedding yesterday and wanted to make sure I was back for. And like the apostles in the boat, though, even though the storm begins to creep in, we're not alone. I ended up being able to contact and stay with a priest at a local parish. I took in the temporarily homeless priest for a little bit. And the beautiful thing is, is that I was able to help Father do some confessions for a youth holy hour. And that really, once again, was this experience of the Lord and a moment of quiet. So being here in Nebraska, most of the time we're not going to actually be able to go up a mountain to pray, like Elijah and Jesus but rather we will most easily find our place of quiet here in our churches, here in Jesus' real presence. Even though God is not in the strong and heavy winds, the apostles were not alone. We are not alone. Jesus came walking out to them over the sea, which means there's no place, nothing that we go through, that God cannot reach. And seeing Jesus, Peter is filled with confidence to then step out into the midst of the raging waters to meet him. Of course, just as we will experience too in those moments when we're trying to have faith in God, but then also shaken by what's going on around us. As the wind and the waves continued, Peter's faith faltered and he was frightened began to sink. In the midst of difficulty, that can happen to us as well. When we find that this, even though we turn to God, the storm continues to go. But that's when Jesus is there immediately with him. He reaches out. And when we experience God's presence within the silence, begin to find the wind to die down. And he'll say to us, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid.